Gavin, a newly arrived student, wants to insure the contents of his apartment. He calls an insurance agent to ask for information. First, you have some time to look at questions one to six. You will see that there is an example that has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Good morning, Diane Davis. Can I help you? Yes, I'd like to get some insurance for the contents of my home. Fine.、Uh, when did you move into the house? A couple of weeks ago, and、um, it's an apartment actually. I was told by the landlord that it would be a good idea to get some insurance for the furniture and、uh, other personal possessions. Gavin moved into his apartment two weeks ago, so B has been circled. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully to the conversation. And answer questions one to six. Good morning, Diane Davis. Can I help you? Yes, I'd like to get some insurance for the contents of my home. Fine.、Uh, when did you move into the house? A couple of weeks ago, and、um, it's an apartment actually. I was told by the landlord that it would be a good idea to get some insurance for the furniture and、uh, other personal possessions. Fine. Well,、uh, let's get some details. What kind of apartment is it? It's a two-bedroom apartment.、Huh? Uh, what floor is it on?、Um, why do you need to know that? <laughs> Because it affects the cost of the insurance. An apartment on the ground floor isn't as protected as others, and there's more chance of a break-in. Really? I didn't know that.、Um, it's on the third, no,、uh, second floor. Second, and、uh, how much is the rent? It's six hundred and fifteen dollars per month. Good, and、uh, where is it located? In Biggin Street, South Hills. I see. And what things did you want to insure? Well, what do you recommend? Well, the most important things are those which you would normally find in a home, things like the television, fridge, and so on. I see. Well, I've got a fridge and a stereo system which I've just bought from a friend. And、uh, how much did you pay for the fridge? Four hundred and fifty dollars. Fifty or fifteen? Fifty. And the stereo system cost one thousand one hundred and fifty dollars.、Uh, have you got a television? Yes, but it's very old and not worth much. Okay. Uh, well, is there anything else you want to insure? Yes, I've got a couple of watches and my CDs and books. How much do you think they're worth? The watches are worth a thousand dollars. For both of them? No, each one, and altogether the CDs and books cost me about four hundred dollars. Okay. So the value of everything you want to insure is four thousand dollars. Hmm. How much will the insurance cost? Let me see. Four thousand dollars divided by plus ten percent. Right. So this kind of insurance—that's、uh, private contents insurance—it、um, comes to.、Uh, One hundred and eighty-four dollars for a twelve-month period. One hundred and eighty-four dollars. Well, that sounds pretty good. Okay, I'll take that policy. Before the conversation continues, you have some time to look at questions seven to ten.
Now listen carefully and answer questions seven to ten. Can I arrange the policy over the phone? Sure. Just let me get the details down. So that's Mr.、Uh... Gavin Murray. That's M U R R A Y. And the address is. It's sixteen C, Biggins Street, South Hills. Okay, sixteen C, Biggins Street, South Hills. That's right. It's two words: South Hills. And your date of birth is. Twelfth of November, nineteen eighty. And your contact number? Home phone number is nine eight seven two four eight double five. Right. And、uh, you're Australian? No, I was born in London, although my mother is from Tasmania.、Oh, really? Whereabouts? Hobart. I see. Interesting place. <laughs> Now, are you working at the moment? No, I'm a full-time student at Sydney University. Right.、Uh, good. That is the end of section one. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section two. Section two. You will hear an employee of the sports supercenter giving a guided tour of the facilities in the centre. First, you have some time to look at questions eleven to seventeen. Listen carefully, and answer questions eleven to seventeen. It's so nice to see so many people here on our open day. I hope you'll be impressed by what you see, and that you'll all decide to join up. We have tried to cover all aspects of sport and fitness here at the centre. Well, let's start, shall we? As we're standing here at reception, looking down the long corridor. You'll notice the car park on your left, where most of you have parked, asks you to reverse into the parking spaces for safety reasons. Also, this morning, a couple of keen potential members rode their bikes right in through the door instead of leaving their bikes outside there on your right, where the secure bike stands are. Um, you may be wondering why there are so many mothers arriving with little children. As we proceed, you'll see that this first room on your right is a crèche, where you can leave your little ones for up to two hours, and they'll be expertly supervised while you work out. After the crèche, on the same side of the corridor, is the male locker room with showers, spa, and sauna. Opposite that, on your left, there's a staircase leading to the mezzanine floor. You'll not only get a great view out over the playing fields. But you'll also find a coffee shop and snack bar selling a range of wholesome food and drinks, protein shakes, fruit smoothies, that kind of thing. We won't go up the stairs at this point. I'll give you some time later when you can explore at your leisure. Most of you in the group are women, so next let me point out the women's locker room, which has the same facilities as the men's. You know, things like showers, spa, and sauna. It's separated from the men's locker room by an office, which the staff mainly use for administrative purposes. 
As we move on, on the same side of the corridor as the stairs, you'll see the entrance to the main hall, where they hold yoga classes, aerobics and so on. On the wall here, there is a timetable of all group classes and it is updated regularly. Now, opposite the hall is the gymnasium itself. Go ahead, have a look. Impressive, isn't it? Very spacious, light and airy with all the most modern equipment. As we continue down the corridor, past the main hall, on the same side, there is a conference room. This is mainly used when the centre is hosting a big sports event of some kind. It gives the officials a quiet place to gather and have meetings and so on. You'll have seen the 400 metre athletics track on your way in beside the car park. We have some pretty big athletics conventions here. Well, after a strenuous workout, I bet there's nothing you'd like more than a swim in the aquatic complex. But first, these rooms on our right are all part of the sports medicine clinic where you have access to a doctor, physiotherapist, massage therapist, podiatrist and even a sports psychologist if you need one. Of course, you'll need to make appointments, but if you have any questions, just pop in and see the clinic receptionist and she'll help you out. OK, let's go through the turnstile ahead of us. And here we are, in the aquatic centre. Turn left, past the pool shop, where you can buy or hire goggles, swim caps and such like. And we're outside, poolside. Beautiful, isn't it? Especially on a day like today. Go on, dip your toes in the water. And if that's not warm enough for you, then I'll take you to the indoor pool, which is less than half the size, but heated to 32 degrees. Let's go back past the pool shop and through the double doors to the indoor pool. Well, that's all I have time to show you. Let's go back to the reception area and, if you like, we can run through some details about opening hours, membership and so on. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 18 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 18 to 20. Now, in this brochure you'll see the opening hours. The centre is open seven days from 5am to 9pm Monday to Friday, except for public holidays which follow Sunday's timetable. On Saturdays we open at the same time as weekdays and close a little earlier. So that's 5am to 7pm on Saturdays and on Sundays everyone gets a sleep in. You can come in between 7am and 5pm. Membership fees cover access to the gym, group classes and the pool. But if you want to join a swim squad to train with a coach, you should inquire at reception for prices and timetables. In the gym, personal training is available from one of our dedicated team of trainers and reception will have more information on who is free when and what hourly rates apply. However, there is always a certificated instructor on hand in the gym at all times for advice and help. And once your membership is paid, you are entitled to a free health assessment and you'll get a program designed to meet your own particular needs. You'll need to book a time for this with the gym instructor. Now, if you're a mum or dad, remember you can leave your children in the creche. They take babies from six weeks old. Bookings are essential though, and you'll have to check the website for times and pricing. Members are also entitled to tennis lessons on a Tuesday or Thursday from 9 till 10.30. But bookings are essential, so ring Natalie. Her number is here in the brochure to reserve a place. Well, I think that's it. Any questions? That is the end of section 2. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Section 3 You will hear a student called Julie talking to her classmate named Ricky about a new essay that Professor Johnson assigned. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 24. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 24. Hi, Julie, it's Ricky. Hi, Ricky, how are you? I noticed you weren't in psychology today. I'm feeling sick, so I didn't go to school today. Would you mind telling me what I missed in class? Sure thing. I'm sorry you're not feeling well. Anyway, we spent most of the class talking about a new essay that Professor Johnson assigned. You need to choose one of the bold headings from the note system and research it. Wow, I picked the wrong day to miss class, huh? You sure did. Could you tell me the specific requirements of this paper? Sure. You need to find scientific research that supports your claim as one of your references. It can be from some of the case studies we discussed in class, or you can find your own. Or even better, you can conduct your own research. I'm sure that would get you an A. Have you decided what you're going to do yet? Also, where are you getting your references? Yeah, I'm going to research facial recognition by infants. I've already found a few experiments in scientific journals. That would probably be a good start for you. There are tons of journals in the library. Great idea. Thanks. I'm considering writing my essay on the effects of one of the psychotropic drugs we talked about in class. I'm sure there is lots of stuff about it on the internet. Are we allowed to use information from the internet? Sure, you can use that as long as it's not your main source for information. You'll probably want to cite some of the experiments we went over. Good idea, thanks. I'm going to try to find some information from a bunch of different sources. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 25 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 25 to 30. Are there any specifications on how the essay should be written? Yeah, Professor Johnson wants it double-spaced. It should be between 6 to 10 pages long. 6 to 10 pages? That's so much. Oh, it's going to take forever. I know, the whole class groaned when he said that. Anyway, you also need to put the title in italics and... Wait, wait. Each section heading or just the main heading? Only the main heading should be in italics. I think section titles are supposed to be in the same format, but maybe in bold. You'll have to check that in class next time. Oh, OK. So I take it that the report has to be typed, since there are so many requirements. What are the other formatting requirements? Yep, it's got to be typed. Aside from that, there are still a few more specifications. You should number each page. Make sure it goes up in the top right corner. OK. I'll make sure to write that down. I always forget to number the pages. Do we need to title and date each page too? You need the shortened title on every page, but no need to include the date. That should just be on the cover page. OK. Thanks. No problem. Also, make sure the margins are 3.25 pixels wide. What? I'm not even sure how to do that. It's OK. I can show you. It's really easy. I think that's all the directions he gave us. A lot of formatting requirements, but we have the freedom to research many things that we like, so that's good. Oh, I almost forgot. Remember to put down your ID number on your report. Thanks so much for your help. I'll see you in class Monday. No problem. Glad I could help. See you later.
That is the end of section 3. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to Section 4. Section 4. You will hear a talk given by a lecturer in the Environmental Studies Department on Agriculture and Environment. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Welcome to this lecture on agriculture and the environment. I hope it is enough to make some of you decide on a career in the field of agricultural science. As you all know, food is a basic human need, and producing enough of it is the single greatest challenge facing the modern world. Developing nations have rapidly expanding populations, so agriculture should be central to any development agenda for those countries. What's more, 75% of people in the developing world are dependent, directly or indirectly, on agriculture for their livelihood. And, for many low-income countries, it's the most important sector of the economy, accounting for 50% of GDP and sometimes it's the primary, if not only, source of foreign currency. Now, of course, when I talk about agriculture, I am using the term to encompass more than just growing food crops. Of course, livestock farming, fishing, and forestry are included. In order to combat wide-scale food shortages, agricultural research programs are underway in many areas. Using science is one way to increase productivity. But a word of warning, agriculture must also be sustainable. Let's look at approaches that are not sustainable. Firstly, overgrazing and intensive cropping are two ancient but destructive practices that lead to loss of soil fertility. Secondly, the modern idea of liberal application of chemical pesticides and herbicides has had disastrous consequences for the health of the land, ranging from the pollution of water sources to the destruction of wildlife. These practices have ignored the mechanisms that sustain ecological communities. Ignorance has led to the destruction of the very biodiversity that is essential for sustainable food production. However, introducing new agricultural techniques especially things like genetic engineering, can be difficult because many people remain suspicious of the fact that plants have had their genetic material modified by scientists. Biotechnology has also led to the dubious practice of bioprospecting, or, as some prefer to call it, biopiracy. Foreign multinational companies have been accused of illegally obtaining samples of indigenous plants of other countries in order to get their hands on genetic material to improve the quality or yield of their own crops. We must put aside the controversy surrounding the field of agricultural biotechnology in order to concentrate on the biggest threat to food production on this planet, which is, yes, climate change. The effects of global warming so far have been to shrink the food supply, thereby pushing up prices and making even the most basic necessities unaffordable. As I see it, the international community must address this and other challenges to agricultural production with urgency. Concrete scientific and technological achievements 
need to be presented for farmers to evaluate and learn to use. But apart from that, governments need to address the complex issues of policy development if the world's hungry are to be fed. Environmental policies need to be put in place to protect ecosystems and correct soil degradation where possible. Countries cannot continue to exploit natural resources whilst ignoring the consequences. In fact, I'd like to see teams of agriculture and environment experts making up a global network which would monitor the world's farming systems. Different farming systems should be studied not only with a view to analyzing the environmental effects, but the social and economic effects as well. The studies would be carried out with a view to stemming pollution and erosion and promoting safe, cost-effective practices that will guarantee a secure food supply in the future. Monitoring sites would need to be set up all across the world and data collected in a systematic way. Of course, building the online infrastructure for such a project would cost millions of dollars, and there would be ongoing costs involved with the monitoring system. But the information gathered would go a long way towards solving the problem of feeding the masses and ensuring millions of people don't face a hungry future. That is the end of Section 4. You now have half a minute to check your answers.